Listen, I'm sorry I don't have time to talk. I'm late for work. Do you have just a few minutes and a cup of coffee? Well, I tell you, I'm really in kind of a hurry. Oh, well, uh, then just make it instant. Yeah, uh, but Phyllis, you don't understand. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to be late for work. Uh, no, I'm not. I am. Uh, what is it? Mary, I'm in a real bind. I've got a deadline, and you've just got to help me. What do you need? A cup of coffee. And Ted Baxter. <laughs> Ted Baxter? Yes, I, to give a talk for my club, I'm in charge of guest speakers, and uh, I, I don't have any guest speaker for tonight. So can you help me out? Tonight? Tonight. But, but, but that's tonight. I know. I guess you're entitled to the whole story. Uh, we had Dr. Herman Davis lined up. You know, the uh, controversial psychiatrist who wrote that great book, Don't Be Embarrassed About S-E-X. Uh. <laughs> but he, uh, he backed out. He decided at the last minute he was uncomfortable with women. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I, uh, Ted's not very good at that sort of thing. But Mary, it's just talking. Yeah, well, it's just talking that Ted's not very good at. Mary, if, if I were in your position, you know that I would do anything I could to help me. Yeah. But I can see it's just, just too much trouble. Well, uh, uh, Phyllis, look, really all right, let's, uh, let's just say that I could are. get Ted to I mean, agree to talk. How long would you need him to I'd talk? I'd need him to talk 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I could get Murray to write something for him. Great. Oh, great. Our subject for tonight is the world today. Uh -huh. Never mind the coffee, Mary. <laughs> I'm, I'm really in a hurry. Uh, do you really help me? I, I just wish there were something I could do for you. Phyllis, the only thing I need is to get to work. Uh, listen, my car is in the shop. Do you think he could drive me to work? Oh, sure. sure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's see, it's 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back. Sure, if it's really that important to you. you well, it, it, would, it would help. Okay, well, it, it'll take me 15 minutes to get ready, but if you really want me to... Uh, well, no, Phil, forget it, really. Well, then I'll, I'll postpone things. I'll, I'll move no, them No, no, Phil, please, no, well, don't I, postpone anything. I'll drop them if myself, necessary. Really, thanks, anyway. Oh, don't mention it. What are friends for? Murray, is the coffee ready yet? Uh, not yet, Lou. No, coffee? We usually have coffee by 9 o'clock, and it's already... It's, uh... How come it's always the Minneapolis clock that's on the blink? Maybe it's because that's the clock we use all the time, Lou. <laughs> I mean, if the Tokyo clock stopped, who'd notice? <laughs> I need coffee. He almost made sense to me. <laughs> Does anybody here know how to work this machine? I can do it. Uh, where do you put the dime? It's not that kind of machine. Well, then I can't do it. <laughs> no, I... Morning, everybody. Hi, Mayor. Mayor, do you realize that if the Minneapolis clock was working, you'd be 15 minutes late? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. Don't apologize now. Go make coffee now. You can apologize later. Coffee, right, right. Hi, T. Oh, Ted, I'm glad to see you. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Coffee, coffee, yes. Does anyone have a dime? Uh, see? <laughs> I needed to open the cabinet. The handle's broken. <laughs> Ted, I've got a favor to ask of you. Uh, you remember my friend, Phyllis Lindstrom? Mm. Yeah, well, she is in charge of the guest speakers for her club, and she was wondering whether or not you would make a speech at her uh, club. It's a, it's a woman's club. Well, if they wanted me, I assumed it was a woman's club. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I don't know what to say, Mayor. I mean, I'm... Well, I, uh, I'd love to. Oh, Ted, thank you. Oh, what's well, nothing. You know, this could be a very interesting experience. I mean talking in front of all those people in person, I mean. Now I'll be able to actually hear their applause instead of just knowing it's there. <laughs> Ted, I don't know how to break this to you, but I don't think people sit at home at night applauding the six o'clock news. <laughs> Murray. No, I know just what you're gonna uh, say. Would you write a speech for Ted? Oh, Mary, I, I, I'd love to. Ah, uh, thank you, Murray. Uh, uh, Mayor. Uh, when do those ladies want me to speak? Uh, well, uh, tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Well, that doesn't give me much time for him to prepare. <laughs> well, what is Ted supposed to talk about tonight? Oh, what difference does it make? They'll love me. <laughs> Why, I've gotten cheers by just simply cutting a, a, a ribbon at a supermarket opening. Well, that's because they didn't think you could do it. <laughs> what the heck am I going to talk about? Well... I have this wonderfully amusing anecdote about... <laughs> What happened to me when I bought this suit? Uh, no, Ted, I think what they want is your personal view of the world situation. He doesn't have one. What they're going to get is my view of his personal view of the world situation. So all those ladies wanted me. 
Well, I better get to work. I've got to write today's news, Ted's speech, and finish my novel before six o'clock. Marie, I didn't know you were writing a novel. Reading one. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, hi, Phil. Yes, it's all set for tonight. Ted will be there. No, forget it. You don't know me a thing. Eight o'clock, Manning Hall. No, really, Phil, you don't owe me anything. I... Well, I tell you, there is one thing. I could use a ride home tonight about 7 o'clock. Oh, right, of course, the meeting. How could I forget that? <laughs> no, no, don't not have your hair done, Phil, really. <laughs> yeah, I know. The buses leave every uh, 24 minutes. <laughs> yes, Ted will be there. Bye-bye. Ted will be where? Oh, uh, well, I just arranged for Ted to speak at a women's club. Mary, do me a favor. Next time you do something like this, you ask my permission first. Wait, no, no. I'll save you the trouble. Next time, the answer will be no. Uh, okay, Mr. Grandpa, uh, why? Mary, a karate expert's hands can get him in a lot of trouble. Yeah, uh, but uh, what does that have to do with Ted? Those hands are considered a deadly weapon. It's the same with Ted's mouth. <laughs> Hi. Were, were you uh, waiting to see somebody? I'm waiting to see Miss Richards. I'm Miss Richards. Are you Miss Richards? Yes. I'm Dave Kerson. I'm a publicity man. You've probably heard of me. Uh, no, I, I can't say that I have. Oh, I'm going to have to work on that. <laughs> well, uh, would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. That's horrible. <laughs> what uh, can I do for you? Uh, well, I saw your name on the board downstairs, and it said you were associate producer of the news. Congratulations. Yes. Well, uh, thank uh, you. I thought you'd be the person to see about getting some publicity. You see, I thought if I could get some of my clients on your news program, it would really help my business a lot. Oh, well, I think probably the man you should see is Lou Grant. He's in charge of the news. Was that Mr. Grant who just yes. left? Yeah. I don't think I'm ready for Mr. Grant. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. <laughs> So, uh, uh, who uh, are some of your clients? Uh, you've heard of the Midwestern Yo-Yo Association? Well, I tell you, Mr. Kirsten, I really don't see how a news program could help publicize yo-yos. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, look, uh, here's my card. If you ever need any publicity for the station, just give me a call. Oh, uh, Mr. Kirsten, uh, the telephone number here is crossed out. Oh, I know that. Uh, you see, what happened is the printer made a mistake on the telephone number, so I got them for half price. If you'd oh. only left my name off, I probably could have got him for nothing. <laughs> well, fine. Well, Is this a poll? Yes, it's a... a poll. <laughs> uh, Mayor. Yes, Ted? Uh, about tonight, uh, do you think I ought to wear my dark blue suit or my tux? Oh, well, no, I, th I think the blue suit will be fine. Okay. Uh, Mary. Yes? I was just wondering, I mean, if you're through with it. Yes? Could I have my dime back? <laughs> Who is it? It's me, Phyllis. <laughs> what, well, what's the matter? What's the matter? Yeah, is there something wrong? Is there something wrong? Phyllis, will you stop repeating everything I say and tell me what's the matter? Wait a minute. Ted, your club. How did it, uh, it, it didn't go well, did it? Well, it didn't go at all. It just laid there. <laughs> Mary, you could at least have warned me that he's never spoken in public before. <laughs> Phyllis, I did. I told you. What happened? Well, he wasn't so bad in the beginning when he was reading his speech. I mean, at least he finished. We uh, applauded. It, it was all very nice. And? And uh, then uh, Helen Edwards asked him a question. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, was, it, was it a hard question? But yes, it, it was. It was, uh, are you for or against women's liberation? Uh, oh. Was he, uh, for it or against it? Well, we don't know. <laughs> he, he just stood there uh, with his mouth open like he was going to say something. 
And then a sort of glaze came over his eyes. He, he giggled a couple of times, <laughs> said uh, something nobody understood, and then he, 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 he asked if there were any more questions. Were <laughs> there? Well, yes. There were about an hour's worth of questions and two minutes worth of answers. <laughs> Poor Teddy must feel just awful. Why don't you ask him? Well, I would, but it's a little late to call He's somebody. He's standing out in the hall. In my hall? <laughs> he, uh, he didn't want to come in unless he had a personal invitation from you. Do, you. do you want to invite him in? Well, of course I do. <laughs> Ted, uh, wh why don't you come in? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, would you like to come in? I'm not sure. Would you phrase that so it's not a question? He seems to take orders rather well. <laughs> Ted, get in here. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take your coat? Another question. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Hello, hello, Mr. Grant. It's me, Mary. Mary Richards. <laughs> oh, not much. What's uh, new with you? Uh, well, yes, Mr. Grant, I do have a very good reason for calling you at one in the morning. Uh, I, I don't know how to say this. Why I, don't you just say it? I guess I'll just say it. <laughs> Mr. Grant, a, a little while ago, Ted uh, dropped by, and, and he was kind of upset, and... Uh, Mr. Grant, Ted's locked himself in my bathroom, and he won't come out. <laughs> So everything was going fine. They were attentive and laughing at what I was saying. And then I realized I wasn't saying anything funny. <laughs> I should have worn my tux. Somehow you don't laugh at a man when he's wearing a tux. I don't know. I just, I think you're blowing this whole thing up way out of proportion. No, he's not, Mary. I was there. Yeah, but I mean, what does it matter if a few women laughed? I mean, how many could there have been anyway? 25. <laughs> Actually, we're both right. There were 200 when he started. Mary, come into my office. We're uh, just going to um, make coffee. <laughs> They're just going to make coffee. <laughs> Ted needs a drink. Oh, well, Mr. Grant, I, Mary, I really don't think that uh, Ted's Mary, in any shape. Mary, you, uh, What, Mr. Grant? Well, a man's in that kind of shape. He doesn't need milk and cookies. I got some brandy. Another glass, please. I never like to see anybody drink alone. Unless... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. When I was a kid, the whole family used to practically live in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, I've got to get going. I just got rattled. I didn't know they were going to ask hard questions. I tried to help him out by asking a question that I was sure he could answer. I asked him where he bought his suit. <laughs> well, how was I supposed to know? I own three suits. <laughs> Ted, why didn't you just open up your coat and read your label? Oh, it's sure just easy to second guess. Everybody's a Monday morning quarterback. I'm telling you, Lou, I, I can't do it. I've lost my charisma. <laughs> Whatever that is. Ted, you know, I, I know just how you feel. I was humiliated once. You were? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was the high school play, and we were doing Romeo and Juliet, and, well, you know the big scene, the final scene, when, mm. when Romeo thinks that I'm dead, and uh, I, was, I was lying, I was lying out there, and, and Romeo was standing over me, and he had, he had just plunged the dagger in, into himself, and uh, I suddenly had to sneeze. <laughs> I, I tried as hard as I could not to sneeze. Sneeze, and I, I did. I sneezed, and, and Romeo looked down and said, Gesundheit. <laughs> and I looked up and ad-libbed, 
Thank you. <laughs> it was awful. A high school play, Mary. It's not the same thing. Oh, but no, Ted. My mother and father were sitting in the audience. So were mine. <laughs> they were the first to leave. <laughs> Ted, my point is that I survived, and so will you. Thanks, Mary, for trying to make me feel good. I wish you were better at it. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll go home now. Ted, you're not going home. He isn't? I'm not? No. You're coming with me. I have a guest room. I'll drive you to work in the morning. It'll be nice. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. I love you for that. <laughs> good night, Mayor. Good night, Ted. You know, Mr. Grant, that's really very, very nice. What's nice? It's the only way I can guarantee you'll show up for work in the morning. <laughs> Besides, it's a great excuse to get my wife out of the guest room. <laughs> That was the senator making that statement at the airport today. Ladies and gentlemen, a serious warming from, uh, warning, from the University of Minnesota's Asphysmerics. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Atmospherics department. I'm <clears throat> sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I... Dale Wick, head of the Department of Atmo... of that department, announced that in five years, smog could reach legal proportions. <laughs> Oh, lethal proportions. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm seeming to be having a little trouble. I'm uh, just sorry. And now for the lighter side of the news. Population explosion. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Sit down, Mary. The rating book came in for this week. Take a look at the six o'clock news rating. We went up. That's right. You know why? I'll tell you. Because people are tuning in to laugh at Ted Baxter. <laughs> or as he might put it, Ben Taxter. <laughs> He's become the thing to do. We're starting to catch on, Mary. But I don't want that. I don't want to do a successful comedy show with Mr. Blooper. I'd rather do an unsuccessful news show. Is that too much to ask, Mary? Mr. Grant, are you trying to say that I am to blame for this? I mean, all right, I admit I got Ted involved in that women's club, but I really don't see how that makes all of this my fault. Sit down. I didn't... <laughs> Maybe, uh, Mary, you haven't noticed this about me before, but I'm one of the few people in my field who doesn't have a peptic ulcer. <laughs> and one of the reasons for that is that I'm able to delegate blame. <laughs> Nothing that goes wrong here is my fault. It's Ted's fault. It's Murray's fault. It's Gordy's fault. This is your fault. It is, isn't it? So fix it before it begins to look like it's my fault. <laughs> this is Ted Baxter saying good nice and good newt. <laughs> what was going on in there? Oh, you don't want to hear about it. I already did. Hi, Ted. You're just saying that to make me feel good. <laughs> hey, look, Ted, it was my fault. It was a slow news day. I, I just couldn't write anything exciting for you to read. Here. A revolution in South America, a crisis in the Far East, and a, an earthquake in Peru? <laughs> no, Murray. It's not the news. It's me. I've lost something. <laughs> Has anyone seen my hat? <laughs> I think it's under Mary's coat. Ted, it's night time. I know, I, I'm just not in the mood to be recognized. <laughs> Excuse me, aren't you? No, I'm uh... not. I used to be. <laughs> he still looks a lot like the... <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Hi, Miss Richards. Oh, hi. Remember me? Sure. You're, um, uh... Dave Curson. Dave Curson. <laughs> you remembered. <laughs> Well, it looks like you're busy. I'll come back. Uh, no, I, I wasn't really. No, I was oh. just about to close up shop. What can I do for you? Well, uh, you see, I had this uh, idea. And uh, it's probably not a very good one. No, it's no good. Uh, Mr. Person, uh, uh, why don't you let me hear the idea? Oh, well, it was an idea I had for the Midwestern Yo-Yo Association. Uh-huh. You see, they're having their Midwestern Yo-Yo Championships this Sunday, and I thought maybe your announcer, Paul Price, could accept their Man of the Year award. And then maybe he'd announce it on the 6 o'clock news, you know, if he'd like to. But it's not a very good idea. Never mind. Uh, uh, Mr. Curson, I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't? I think I could get everyone on the station yo-yos, too. There's just one problem. You see, uh, Paul Price is going to be covering the hockey game no. on Sunday. See, I didn't think But no, me. wait a minute. What if we could get Ted Baxter? Oh, Miss Richards, do you think you could? Well, Good I'm... night, Mayor. Murray, do you think we could get Ted to accept a Man of the Year award? Oh, well, sure, but who'd be dumb enough to give him one? <laughs> the Midwestern Yo... Yo Association. Uh, Ted Baxter, Mr. Yo-Yo. <laughs> well, the shoe certainly fits. <laughs> Anybody got the correct time in Minneapolis? Subtract 15 hours from Tokyo and add a day. Thanks. <laughs> Morning, Miss Grant. Morning. Can I help you with those? Uh, yeah. I want you to answer these letters. Spam mail? Not exactly. <laughs> Dear sir, the 6 o'clock news is an insult to my intelligence and a disgrace to television. I am not going to watch the show anymore. And neither are my mommy and daddy. <laughs> you ever get a hate letter written in crayon? Mr. Grant, have you seen Ted this morning? I, mm. I think I might have some good news for you. My good news is I haven't seen Ted this morning. Oh, Lou. Oh. Got to see you about a couple of things. What is it, Ted? First of all, there are no bath towels in my dressing room again. There's no bath in your dressing room. That's the second thing I want to see. <laughs> Who ever heard of an anchorman's dressing room without a bath? I want you to get on that right away, Lou. After all, it's not too much to ask for. I understand Cronkite's got a sauna. <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> I got 600 people to give him an award. 600 people all applauding, and all Ted had to say was, thank you. Well, it sure worked. Ted's back in shape, and we certainly needed him back in shape. Ted's his old self again. <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> you understand, of course, why I can't bring myself to thank you for that. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Miss Richards. Hi, Dave Curson. Dave Curson, remember me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got Ted Baxter's award back from the engraver. Oh. The towels are real nice, Lou. Thanks. You're welcome, Ted. Maybe the next time you can get me some cloth ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ted, your award came back from the engravers, and oh. uh, Dave wanted to present it to you. Oh. Good luck. <laughs> oh, isn't it lovely? Uh, what does it say, Ted? To Ted Baxter. Oh, read the rest of it, Ted. Yo, yo, man of the year. <laughs> Got any more of these little award things? As a matter of fact, I do. You see, I have...